I'm Richard McKenzie, co-author of Microeconomics for MBAs. This uh, video module is going to be on optimizing behavior. It will be a review to some extent, but this review will be useful because we will quickly move into optimizing behavior on the part of a firm. You may recall our, our considering a graph that looks like this. Uh, in this uh, case, we can say that the activity involved is fishing. That is, an individual wants to devote time to fishing, catching fish, or whatever. And we can put down here the quantity of fish uh, that are caught. Now, we have explained in some detail why demand curves are, are downward uh, sloping. And uh, the moral of that uh, analysis is basically that the uh, marginal value uh, or marginal benefit of, of additional units begins uh, to diminish. We might also note that the marginal cost of producing a good uh, indeed uh, goes up. It can go up for, for two reasons. First off, as an individual uh, engages in more and more of an activity, that individual is going to uh, give up more and more uh, valuable uh, opportunities. To catch the first fish, uh, the individual is going to give up, give up something else that uh, he or she could have done. Uh, but that individual is likely to give up the least valuable activity, which means that the cost of that first fish is going to be as low uh, as it can be. Of course, the cost of doing anything is the value of that which is given up. Now, the marginal value of this first fish that is caught is way up here, uh, MB1. The marginal value of the next fish may be lower, and the additional cost uh, of producing that additional fish may be higher, but uh, as on the first fish, there is a surplus value to be created. The same is true uh, on the uh, second fish. The same is true of the third, the fourth, the fifth, and so forth. In every case along here, the marginal value is above the marginal cost of producing. There is a gap between those two, which means total welfare must, in fact, be going up until you reach a quantity of fishing or fish caught equal to Q1. If you go beyond Q1, then the marginal cost is greater than the marginal value. That means that the value of that which is given up is greater than the value of the fish uh, that can be uh, caught. So a person has optimized or maximized his or her well-being at uh, this inner intersection. We can uh, take the analysis and uh, apply it to uh, accident uh, prevention uh, as we do uh, in the textbook. There is a demand curve for preventing accidents. There is a cost to preventing accidents. A person is going to weigh off the marginal value of preventing an accident versus marginal cost and uh, so on. And, and the person is going to move uh, toward this intersection. There is some optimum number of accidents that are going to be prevented. This, of course, means uh, that there is some optimum number of accidents that, that are going to allow uh, to happen. We could, in fact, uh, use this analysis to talk about study time uh, for this uh, course or the amount of time spent on, on uh, these video modules. There are marginal values to uh, each unit of time spent on, the, on this course or on these modules. There is increasing marginal cost, and so why are you going to stop reading? Why are you going to stop watching these, um, these modules? Well, at some point, uh, uh, you reach an optimum. Beyond that point, the additional cost, the value of what you could have done, exceeds the uh, value uh, of, of watching the modules or studying a little bit uh, longer. Now, we can transfer this analysis to, uh, to the business uh, world, and we can assume that the marginal cost, again, is uh, increasing all the way from unit uh, one. If the price is uh, P1, then the person is going to continue to um, produce this good until a quantity of, of Q1. Why? Uh, the price of the first unit is greater than the marginal uh, cost of that first unit. That means that the firm 
receives a profit on producing that unit equal to the difference between P1 and MC1. The same is true of every unit up to this point here. If the person or firm were to go beyond uh, Q1, then of course uh, profits would be going down. There would be a loss on that, on that one unit beyond Q1 equal to that, and so on down uh, the line. 